Today we're talking about XRP versus the SEC. So we know by now, if you've been around crypto in the past 24 hours, you know that XRP is being sued by the federal government, or at least they're being sued by the Securities Exchange Commission. And I want to talk about where we're at right now. What does it look like? What has developed in the past 24 to 48 hours? And will the X, does XRP have a chance of beating this lawsuit? Do they have a chance of winning? My tune has changed a little bit since yesterday. If you saw my video yesterday, I've said two things very clear from the beginning. By the way, if you believe in the future of cryptocurrency and you believe that the government doesn't have a right to tell you what you can do with your money, then do me a favor, smash that subscribe button, hit the bell notification icon, and please give this video a like. If you want to learn how to earn passive income with cryptocurrency, specifically if you don't have any money to start with, go check out our free newsletter down in the description, Crypto Passive Profits Newsletter. Okay, two things I've, I've said from the very, very beginning. First one is, this isn't about XRP. This is about all of crypto. I even tweeted at Vitalik yesterday. Um, I tweeted at him right here. He commented, Looks like Ripple XR, XRP team is sinking to new levels of strangeness. They're claiming that their shitcoin should not be called a security for public policy reasons, namely because Bitcoin and Ethereum are Chinese controlled. For some reason, Vitalik got offended by that. And I just responded to him with all due respect. Of course, I misspelled that with all due respect. But out at the end of the day, you need to be rooting for XRP community. I'm an Ethereum investor, not an XRP investor. This is crypto versus U.S. government, not XRP versus the U.S. government. And I really believe that. This is really about crypto. I, to my knowledge, I've never, ever owned XRP, ever. Um, to me personally, it's not been a project I've been a fan of. I've got friends who love it. But it's not been a project that i followed. It's not been a project that I have been in love with. But at the end of the day, in this situation, I'm rooting for XRP. Now, here's the second thing that I said in my video yesterday. I said that on Twitter, XRP, he, he was responding to a comment that they made uh, the Brian, I think it's Brad Garlinghouse, the CEO had made about the reasons that the government shouldn't sue them or SEC should not sue them is because, you know, ultimately Ethereum and Bitcoin are, are controlled by China because that's where a lot of the miners are, et cetera. And he said, Hey, if you sue us, then basically this technology could end up going to someone like China or control this technology ultimately could end up in someone's hands like in China, et cetera. And that's kind of what he was saying. And I agree. That was a very weak argument. And it actually made me nervous. I was like, Ugh, if that's the best you've got, then this whole thing is doomed from the beginning. But there's been some new developments. And I think that that was just one small argument of a much greater argument. And I think XRP in some ways may have the upper hand here, but we're going to talk about that. So we're going to look at quick three short news stories. First of all, right here, XRP price falls 24% in 24 hours as exchanges begin delisting. Well, first of all, spoiler alert, this is a dramatic title. Most exchanges have not started delisting. Could they start delisting? Absolutely. Why? Because if a, if XRP is seen as a security, then that means the exchanges that listed XRP are given are basically facilitating the light the sale of an unregistered security. Do you see how this starts to have crazy ripple effects throughout crypto, which is crazy? So it, it it's not and if by the way, if XRP is considered a crypto, I mean a security, sorry, there's then there's a good chance that there are other projects that could easily be seen as securities this creates problems with exchanges there's a reason why there are so many cryptocurrency exchanges for you to choose from i mean literally there's like 30 40 exchanges that you could set up an account with tomorrow but if you want to trade stocks in any given country there's just a handful a small handful of exchanges that can really that you can trade stocks with and part of that is because of the amount of regulation to be able to deal in traditional finance. And that regulation is not there for cryptocurrency. And quite honestly, I'm not a fan of new regulations coming in. I mean, we do have to have some guidance, but I find that regulations basically hurt innovation in many cases. I mean, I'm not, I'm not a no regulation guy. I'm just not one who begs for regulations. However, what's going on right here is exchanges are probably going to start getting nervous about XRP. So you just need to expect that right now there's only these exchanges, OSL, 
uh, Big T Cross Tower. I don't think any of those are, are major exchanges. Um, other people are chiming in on this on Twitter. Um, right here, let's see. In, in 2017, 2018, Ripple also entered into agreements with at least 10 digital asset trading platforms, none of which were registered with the SEC in any capacity, and at least two of which will have principal places of business in the United States. Providing for listing and trading incentives with respect to XRP, Ripple paid these platforms a fee, typical in XRP, to prevent the buying and selling of XRP on their systems and sometimes incentives for achieving volume metrics. So the, if Ripple, if Ripple is indeed seen as a, a if they Ripple is indeed seen as a stock, then there's all sorts of potential issues here. Manipulating stock prices. I mean, th this is a problem and it's also a problem for those exchanges. Now you may think, but it doesn't matter in this case. It doesn't matter. And by the way, just so you know what I'm doing in, in today's video, I'm going to cover these three news stories and I'm basically going to lay out where we're at and what's going on. And then I'm going to give you my thought. And spoiler alert, right now, I think Ripple might have, at least from a logical legal argument, they, they might have the upper hand because the U.S. government contradicts themselves. And I'll get to that in a minute. So here's the challenge. You may be thinking, well, you know, Ripple, in this case right here, you know, if they're not registered with the SEC, they didn't know it at the time, they can't be in trouble, it should be an issue. But you see, that's the challenge with Ripple. Ripple started selling before, their ICO was before the guidance came out that ICOs were discouraged or illegal or whatever. All that guidance came out long before. And by the way, ICOs aren't illegal. You have to be an accredited investor in the U.S., which means you have to make two hundred thousand dollars a year to be allowed to be able to invest in ICOs. They just took that opportunity away from, uh, you know, the smaller investor, which I think is unfortunate because I'm always going to be on the side of the smaller investor, and I don't think you should take opportunity away from people because you think that somehow if they make a lot of money, they're somehow smarter than somebody else, which is ridiculous. So the, this, I'm getting off track there, but this I, this whole thing here, you know, if they're coming after Ripple now, and keep in mind, Ripple was issued before the whole ICO thing. People were coming. Haley Lennon commented on down here. She said, "You know who else is at risk if XRP is considered a security? Every exchange that lists it, and that's true. Even if they stop trading today, they're at risk. Why? Because if XRP is considered a security, what's going to happen is people who have lost money on exchanges." will try to open up class action lawsuits against exchanges, which I think is dumb. You're responsible for your own decisions, but that's what's going to happen. And the federal government knows this. I mean, I think this is such a cheap, dirty trick by them. Um, and then she said it would probably start with these exchanges. Uh, now, this is where it starts to get interesting. Brad Garlinghouse, the CEO of Ripple, said he would aggressively fight and prove our case with co-founder Chris Larson. Um, Garlinghouse, this is part of the new information as of today. Garlinghouse emphasized that he has the option, meaning it's on the table right now. It's, I think it's interesting how public he's being about this. He, oftentimes, this stuff occurs behind closed doors. Nobody talks about it. Here, Garlinghouse emphasized that he has the option to individually settle with the SEC, but has decided not to take that route. Hence, the final court decision in the U.S. is needed to officially conclude whether XRP is or is not a security. Do you think it's a security? Let me know down in the comments. All right, so this is the news article going on. Two things I wanted you to see. I wanted you to see that XRP is absolutely intending to fight. In fact, looking back on it, they were the ones who broke the story on Twitter. No one waited for the press to say, hey, you know, XRP has been getting sued by the SEC because it's public information. Because once a lawsuit has been filed, it's public info. They actually broke the story that they expected the lawsuit to come before it was ever actually filed formally. My video yesterday was talking about how it was formally filed. So these guys are definitely trying to get ahead of this. They definitely are, are in this looking for a fight, so to speak. And I don't think that's all bad for crypto. I mean, I don't think it's bad at all. Next up, SEC says the third largest cryptocurrency was sold all wrong. So let's start looking. This is where we start hearing some of their story. And, and admittedly, they have not really laid out tremendously what their side of this is. And I, I hope they have something better than what's out here so far because it's it's not a lot. Meaning, why? What What is their case? What are the components? What are they saying exactly makes it a security? So let's go through this. Here's what we know so far. Ripple, its former CEO and founder Chris Larson, and its currency, I'm sorry, and its current CEO, Bradley Garlinghouse, 
are being sued by the U.S. Securities and Exchange Commission. The SEC says that they raised more than $1.3 billion through an unregistered securities offering. The suit claims that Ripple violated securities laws by selling XRP through the Wall Street Journal calls the third largest cryptocurrency by market value over a seven-year period starting in 2013. According to the complaint, the illegal security offering created an information asymmetry that let Larson and Garlinghouse sell XRP to investors who only knew what Larson and Garlinghouse chose to tell them. At the heart of the suit is a basic question about XRP. Is it a security or is it a currency? According to the SEC's suit, it is a security and so Ripple didn't provide to its investors with the I'm sorry, didn't provide its investors with the proper information they needed to assess any potential risk. According to Garlinghouse, it's a virtual currency, which means the SEC has nothing to do with it. The SEC has previously ruled that Bitcoin and Ethereum are currencies. That's important to note. Also, the Justice Department treated XRP as a currency in 2015 when Ripple settled a suit over its business. So they've already been with the suit with the government, by the way, and they, they essentially settled in their favor. But XRP differs from Bitcoin and Ethereum in an important way. For those two currencies, new coins are created through a mining process, which is ongoing. Ripple started XRP by creating 100 billion units all at once. Ripple owns about 6.4 billion XRP, and Garlinghouse and Larson also own a good chunk of it. Another 48 billion XRP are being held in reserve for periodic sales. The difference may be why the SEC is claiming XRP is a security, not a currency. This could be correct. It's a bit speculative because we don't really know. The SEC has won similar suits against Block.1 and Kick in the past, saying that the initial coin offerings these startups offered were actually securities. But these cases were different. Kick and Block.1 did their ICOs after an SEC directive in 2017. XRP came into existence years before that directive. And this is true, by the way, and that's kind of my point here. Now, an argument could be made that they could continued to sell after the directive but they they weren't an in initial offering any longer they they sold their cryptocurrency to exchanges and to investors to raise money the lawsuit didn't come as a surprise garlinghouse announced yesterday that the company expected the suit and ripple has already published its wells response a document that they explains the sec that its actions were legal so this is interesting. They're already fighting over this. Like they already had a response prepared. So this is this is actually good news for those of us in crypto. These guys are being absolutely proactive. They weren't waiting to be. They were not waiting to be reactive to this. An important part of settling whether XRP is a currency or security may involve something called the Howey test, which was created by a 1946 Supreme Court case. The ruling defined a security as an investment of money in a shared enterprise with an expectation of profits from others' work. According to Ripple, XRP doesn't satisfy the Howey test for a variety of reasons, but especially because no one bought XRP with an expectation of getting Ripple's profits. That's true. Nobody was getting Ripple's profits. There's no dividend, nothing. The SEC complaint challenges that in 2016, Ripple admitted to the New York State Department of Financial Services that buyers were purchasing XRP for speculative purposes. By the way, so what? Isn't that why we buy everything that's an investment for some sort of speculative purpose? So what? It also cites a hedge fund investor who owns XRP saying in 2015 that the increase in XRP value is heavily dependent upon the success or on the success of Ripple. Again, so what? That's his opinion because the, the, he's saying he's saying that if it, it but if they do well than off the work of others. If they do well, if Ripple does well, then XRP does well. Who cares that one person said that? If that's true, it's true from a speculative nature because Ripple Labs and the XRP is separate. And it's one of the issues. I mean, I'm not going to go too terribly deep in it in this video, but it's one of the issues that I've always kind of had with it as a currency myself. However, the, just because the if the SEC complaint they're actually saying yeah but a hedge fund said are you kidding me if that's the best they got this isn't a very good i mean i'm not a lawyer i'm not a judge i'm not going to rule on this but i mean i think anyone can see that's just not a strong complaint at all at all blockchain firm ripple plans to fight approaching sec lawsuit this is all good news this is talking about the fight again we are we are right and will aggressively fight 
and win this battle in the courts to clear rules of the road for the entire industry, says Brad Garlinghouse. And this is good right here. This is so good. Instead of providing a clear regulatory framework for crypto in the U.S., Jay Clayton inexpl inexplicably decided to sue Ripple, leaving the actual legal work to the next administration. So here's the challenge. This is such, when I say it's good, I don't mean it's good news. It's just such a great point. Like, this is so annoying. And I've seen this happen in FTC cases and FDA cases. Instead of giving guidance, instead of giving guidance and saying, hey, we think this our new guidance in a new because of new technology, new innovation, this is legal, this is illegal. Instead of doing that and then giving people a chance to comply, they're basically saying, hey, there's a gray zone here. There's no line. It's not clear. It's not black or white, but we think you're wrong. So we're going to come after you for it. This is common in regulatory agencies. The EPA's done this. The FDA's done this. In my issue, in my... I can't stand when laws and regulations are unclear. And this is and, and instead of making it clear, you got some bureaucrat, Jay Clayton, who's going after the CEOs. And I find this so annoying. Sometimes I think, what is the deal? Is it like an ego trip or what? Why would you anyway, enough about that. So it's not even clear, but the, but hopefully we'll get some clarity outside of this lawsuit. Unfortunately for Ripple and Brad Garlinghouse and the co-founders, they're going to have to take this on the chin. But it's good to see that they're willing to go at it. Go at it, and I think that's good. Um, the SEC is fundamentally wrong as a matter of law. In fact, XRP is a currency and does not have to be registered as an investment contract. I mean, they're pretty solid about that. They're pretty solid about that. So, I wanted to get this quote as well in here from their lawyer. And then I'll wrap it up with some of my thoughts. Their lawyer. This is this is what you want your lawyer. I mean, you want your lawyer to be aggressive if you're paying him well. And I'm assuming they're paying him well. This is what he says. Here, here we allege that Ripple and its executives failed over a period of... Oh, sorry. That's the wrong one. Oh. Here it is. This complaint is wrong as a matter of law. Other major branches of the U.S. government, including the Justice Department and the Treasury Departments and FinCEN, have already determined that XRP is a currency. Transactions in XRP thus fall outside the scope of the federal securities laws. This is not the first time the SEC has tried to go beyond its statutory authority. The courts have corrected it before and will do so again. That's coming from their... Attorney Michael Kellogg of Kellogg, Hanson, Todd, Fiegel, and Fre uh, Frederick. I think this is um, incredible. I think it's well said. And the biggest, for me, the biggest thing is the Treasury Department, FinCEN, and the Justice Department have all said XRP is a currency. And so that's in, in previous rules. And by the way, that's for crypto in general. In crypto in general, all of them have called cryptocurrency at some point or another a currency. IRS calls it a property. I mean, we need some clarity here. We need guidance here for sure. Now, just a bit of a recap, and I want to tell you kind of what's going on and, and my thoughts at the end. So we'll wrap this up. Again, this is a fight that was bound to happen. Sooner or later, this was going to have to happen. Uh, there needs to be some sort of clear guidance, and I believe we're hopefully going to get it outside of this, this court battle. Now, a slight positive is this is creating a lot of publicity for crypto right now. Now, it's not necessarily positive publicity, but if you believe that all publicity is good publicity, then this is obviously good publicity. I mean, I just showed you an article on Markets Insider and Fox Business, much more mainstream than, say, Cointelegraph. Now, is it a currency? Is XRP a currency? Is it a stock? You let me know your thoughts down in the comments. But I wanted to let you know kind of where XRP is at. And I think XRP has the most compelling case here. Let's start with the SEC. I'll wrap up with X XRP. The SEC basically, they, they're they saying, their whole argument here is that it's a security. And that the only reason they're saying it's a security so far is because they've, uh, they've admitted that people speculated on price in a previous uh, court battle. And at the same time, there's some hedge fund manager who said if Ripple Labs does well, then XRP does well. So far, that's it. That That's the argument that they're making at this point. That is a weak, weak argument. The other thing that I can't stand about this 
is they, they're talking about, oh, they failed to disclose to their investors that it's actually a stock. And because they failed to disclose that, you see, if XRP does this, I mean, if the federal government wins, if the SEC wins here against Ripple or against XRP, however you want to say it, at the end of the day, it's a problem because I promise you there's going to be a class action lawsuit against XRP, which I don't, I don't agree with this. As an investor, you know what you're investing in. You weren't manipulated. But if the law says, oh, you should have had more information, then you literally, by law, have legal standing. But you, yourself, probably did not see XRP as a stock. If you, had, if you thought it was an unregistered security and you shouldn't invest in it, you would have never invested in it in the first place. And I don't mean you listening to this. I'm saying the investors who would be a part of the class action lawsuit. But there's probably going to be a class action lawsuit if XRP loses. But in crypto, we have to hope XRP wins this for sure. Now, here's kind of SRP's perspective where they're standing right now. They're, they're basically in this situation where they're saying, hey, this doesn't, you know, this isn't a security. It, it doesn't meet the Howey test. Um, they're also saying, you know, Ripple's gotten clarity in the past from, you know, other government departments. Justice Department, Treasury Department, FinCEN have all in the past said it was a currency. That's where they're, they're at right now. Also, also, the SEC didn't give clarity. And if they'd given clarity, then presumably XRP would have done their best to operate outside of that clarity or within that, sorry, within that clarity. Also, their ICO occurred before the SEC's directive in 2017. Now, my overall thoughts on this is XRP's muddied the waters a little bit. And they they know they've muddied the waters a little bit. And I think this is why the government, listen, the SEC is looking for someone to make an example out of. And XRP, I think, is arguably their best potential target. I still hope they lose. But the issue with XRP is that it's not mineable. It's just issued. It's just issued. All of these XRP tokens, however many billions were created, you know, essentially at the same time. The XRP has a bit of a, a weak use case, M meaning most of the banks that use Ripple to transact with don't even use XRP. They can, but they don't. So there's a the, one of the, the there's two big reasons for XRP to exist. If you want to look at a functional standpoint, the biggest reason for the company is to raise money. I mean, they have literally sold XRP to fund business operations. And if that sounds a little bit wild to you, just know that there's a lot of other cryptocurrencies that have done the exact same thing. They've sold their developer share or they've sold out the developer fund or the pre-mine or whatever to fund operations. So arguably, what the, one of the reasons that stocks are sold is to raise money for a company. So arguably, there's that similarity there. It's not like it's strictly mineable like Ethereum or like um Bitcoin, for example. And so I don't know what the government's ultimately going to say. I do know the waters are a little bit muddy. But at the end of the day, and I can't restate this enough, this is about the U.S. government versus crypto. This is not just because the moment that they give guidance, if they if they rule that XRP is an, a security, that means there's a lot of cryptocurrency exchanges that are going to be in trouble potentially. It also means that power is going to be concentrated to the exchanges that have the deepest pockets, the most money backed by the largest financial firms. That's not good for the average small investor, in my personal opinion. It also means there's a lot of cryptocurrencies that are going to have to stop trading or possibly fight off their own lawsuits because they're in a, they have similarities in how they operate as the, way, the same way that Ripple does or the same way that XRP does. So we'll have to see how that guidance comes down. Now, if XRP wins, this is good for crypto. It is better overall that cryptocurrency is seen as a financial instrument of exchange, a currency. The, the, over, overall, I mean, there's pluses, pluses and minuses to everything, but overall, that is better for the crypto industry at large. This is going to be one to watch. I'm going to keep you posted. Be sure to hit that subscribe button. Hit the bell notification icon. You don't want to miss it. I'm going to stay on top of this because I think this is extremely important. By the way, if you think that cryptocurrent that XRP is a cryptocurrency, again, or if you think that it's a security, let me know down in the comments.
Thank you so much for watching. Ladies and gentlemen, this is Crypto Wealth. Decentralized crypto equals freedom. I'm out.